Hello, everyone, and welcome to this open day session at the Creative Computing Institute. My name is Georgina Cadovila, and I am the Creative Learning Producer at the Institute, or CCI. And today we're going to be talking about our MSc in Data Science and AI for the Creative Industries. And we've got with us Louis McCollum, who's the course leader of the MSc. And we have current students, Nadia Alzagov and Polo Salagov, who will be also sharing some of their experience being part of the course. As you may already know, this open day session is complementary to the one that we run in December 2020. So if you haven't done it yet, I would strongly encourage you to watch the recording of the past information session, which is also available on our YouTube channel. But now, yes, we'll just get this started. So we all have plenty of questions, right? That's part of our human nature, isn't it? So the aim of today's session will be to make sure that all the questions and doubts that arise during the process of applying to the MSc or considering applying to this MSc in data science and AI for the creative industries are answered from a variety of perspectives. That's why we have uh, Louis, Nadia, and Polo here today. So in order to do that, what we've done is put together a list of the most frequently asked questions about the course that we've been receiving uh, during the past year that we've been running the course. Um, so as we go along the session, you'll see all these questions appearing at the bottom of the screen. And yeah, that's, that's going to that's gonna be happening during the, the full hour that we're going to be online. However, this is an open and safe space for you as well to have a say. And we would like to encourage you to ask us anything that you feel it's relevant. Maybe there's something you want to clarify or something that hasn't been covered during the session and you feel it's relevant for you to make a decision. Please uh, use the chat section and send us any, any queries, any doubts, any questions, and we'll do our best to cover it during the event today. Um, lastly, in terms of accessibility, we are live streaming on YouTube today, so we won't have live captions available during the session. But know, please, that this session will be captioned afterwards, and a recording will be uploaded on our YouTube channel, so you can rewatch if you need to go through any of the material again. If there's something that you missed, please know that everything is going to be available for you afterwards. So, with further ado, I will now invite Louis, Nadia, and Polo into this virtual space. And we're going to say hi to them. Let me add them all onto the screen. Hi there. How is everyone? Hello. Hi. Thanks for joining us today. So, yeah, do you want to maybe just say hello and, and share some bits of yourself first? Do you want to start? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, thanks, Georgina. Um, yeah, so I am Lee McCallum. I am the course leader for the program. Um, what that means is um, I'm kind of administratively in charge. Um, I do a lot of the teaching on the course. Um, and in this first year, as this is the first year that it's been run, um, and moving forward, I've been in charge of uh, kind of putting together a lot of the curriculum, designing the program, um, as well as delivering and teaching it. Um, yeah, I, I have a background in uh, machine learning, uh, specifically for like creative and performance uses. Um, my PhD was in robotics, um, <laughs> so I, I <coughs> sorry, one second. <coughs> I built robots that played music, um, so uh, that's my background. Um, and also academically, I've been involved in a lot of interdisciplinary programs from yeah since it's pretty much since I started my, like, all of my academic programs have been uh, on this nice kind of interplay between um, creative applications and, and kind of computer science or engineering. Um, so I really enjoy, like super thrilled to be running this program. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing from people today. Thank you, Louis. Do you want to go next, Polo? Um, yeah, uh, I'm Polo and I'm a student <laughs> and um, well, I come from a graphic design and illustration background. So I also did my BA at um, LCC. So, and then after two years, I came back <laughs> to study this. And yeah, I just chose it because it uh, really kind of related to questions I was asking during my BA and stuff I wanted to do. And it just kind of was a good fit. So that's what we're doing now. Beautiful. Thanks, Polo. 
Um, hi, I'm Nadia. So before this, I was also in UAL in LCF. I did fashion buying and merchandising, and I was a fashion buyer's assistant for a year. And then in my final year, I got really into fashion tech and digital clothing. And it was from there that I got more into tech and wanting to to explore like um, that in like fashion and creative spaces. Yeah. Amazing. Thanks, everyone. That's really good to, to hear from you before we jump on the first question that I think will be for Louis. So it says, what exactly is an MSc? Um, OK, so an MSc is a Master of Science. Um, so as opposed to most things that you'd probably do in an arts uh, in an art school context, um, where you might get an MA or an MFA or something like that. Um, the MSc um, basically is going to refer towards uh, the difference is going to be kind of how we assess your work, basically. Um, so the focus is more on the kind of uh, kind of research and scientific approach to the content, rather than necessarily like judging you on, say, the output of your practice. Um, or that kind of thing. So that's the that's the main difference of it being an MSc rather than other things um, is the kind of assessments and the kind of assignments that will give you um, and kind of the work and the research to expect you to do for your thesis. Um, so the, although the the focus is mainly um, is often in it's always in the kind of creative output and creative industries, um, and there is a, like a broad kind of a broad church of stuff that. Um, of kind of assessments of things that we give people um, from like essays to technical tasks to more like research things. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's not necessarily gonna be a focus on say expanding your practice in like the same way a postgraduate degree or an art school might traditionally be. Thank you, Louis, that's great. Another one that we receive a lot, which is, is this real computer science? I guess that's for you as well, Louis. <laughs> Yeah, nice. I, I feel like we should air quote it as well. Yeah. <laughs> that real computer science. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, in, in terms of the skills that we teach, um, you, we, we, yeah, we do teach coding. Um, a lot of this, like almost all of the stuff that we do is programming based and we'll start you with kind of interacting with some kind of programming stuff pretty much from the first week. Um, although we don't necessarily expect you to come with any coding skills. Um, and I think probably next year, um, which we didn't do this year, we are planning to do uh, kind of maybe a pre kind of intensive coding introduction um, just for people who have no programming backgrounds at all, just to kind of get people in. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think of like what, what's considered like exactly computer science. Um, yeah, so we tend to we we all tend to use um, programming for stuff, and we will um, get people to think in computational ways. And um, I guess what you would get in a something maybe more straight down the line, computer science is maybe more theoretical stuff. We're pretty applied, so we'll kind of teach you stuff very much in a context for a reason, and um, and also maybe like broader sides of maybe like software development and kind of like fitting stuff within infrastructures and and um, so we teach you programming but it's more like kind of exploratory and kind of sketch based we won't be like now make me something that will run in a big company etc um, etc cetera, et cetera. and did that so that kind of stuff um, but there is yeah there is a lot of technical skills that you'll learn and um, which you could then even if you don't want to do data science you could take elsewhere and um, that you might pick up in a computer science course Beautiful, thanks, Louis. Um, so we're talking about the foundations of the course. I think this one will also go for you. What is a data scientist exactly? Um, yeah, so I think we, we covered this a bit in the in the in the first one. If you see that video, um, but I mean, for me, um, the interest in data science is a bit. I always like to. Give people the idea that data science is about telling stories. It's about getting some some amount of like numeric data, well, I guess, or just some measurement of some stuff that exists in the world, and um, and then kind of just for the method, you have to find some way of turning that into numbers. And um, there are various like 
many options you're kind of doing this and very like certain problems that can come with this um, and then yeah using it to actually have some like workable insight um which you can then kind of feed back into whatever context you're doing and um, so kind of as a data scientist you kind of need to have these practical skills of kind of being able to kind of build a new software the kind of the math skills in order to, to work with the numbers and like generate the insights but then you also want some kind of domain expertise because I don't know, there are maybe some places would teach you um, stuff as kind of like everything's data or like you know doesn't matter what it is but you can just take your data and analyze it and um, I think that's a really like people that yeah that's really not going to be a great approach and um, so hopefully I think this combination of knowing some stuff about the area that you're trying to do and having some domain expertise and then having the kind of technical skills to implement it and the kind of math skills and um, to be able to like uh, kind of generate those insights um, is kind of comes together in a nice combination. Beautiful. And since you touched upon this idea of everyone having their own domain, um, can we talk a little bit about the like, diverse range of backgrounds that we welcome into this MSc? Because that's something that I believe makes this course very unique, that everyone just brings their own expertise into, into the course and, and share space during this more than a year course. So if anyone comes from a specific like background, could we share with them how, we'll, how would this MSc help them like get into this context of creative STEM? Or maybe Polo and Nadia after, afterwards, you could also share a bit about how you've been experiencing that and how it's been for you as well. Um, so are we, sorry, are, we, are we waiting for people to post some stuff about their backgrounds and we can address it? Um, that would be amazing actually to know who's in the room and yeah, what, yeah. what, what domain you come from. Um, in the meantime, yeah. Do you want to start, Nadia, maybe sharing a bit more about how you've been finding it coming from a fashion background, for example? Yeah, so I think before coming in, it's so important to know what you want to do, like have your purpose and your motivation of what you're trying to achieve. But then once you join the course, um, also be flexible to like, like trying new things. Um, so for me specifically, I found that it's been really helpful um, when like learning this new technology and stuff, um, coming from a fashion background to have my expertise and also being confident that um, I know what I'm doing. I think because I read a lot of like fashion journal papers or tech journal papers and I like coming from my fashion background, I knew like things were not right, um, even though the tech was fine. Um, from the creative point of view, I think there's a lot that's overlooked because they don't have like creative expertise. And um, which is why I think this course is so important. And so when I read these papers, I can then critique and and come up with better alternatives that have these other points of views like in mind. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's so important to to have a point of view and be confident in, in whatever your field is in to make changes to like the tech space. Uh, yeah, I think I, I remember some of this coming up with, with Nadia where we would, I think quite often what you get is people who have come from a more like computer science engineering background who then go, oh, we can use this and we could use this to um, analyze, yeah, generate clothing outfits or like analyze um, other stuff in the fashion industry or like make music or, even though they don't necessarily have an interest in this. And then they kind of just be like, oh, we made this thing which can generate a million, a million bark sonatas or, and, and you go, well, did anyone actually want that? Um, or like, I think yeah, Nadia was reading papers and she was going, yeah, no, they're, they're like reporting these things that they're like, and this will be really useful for the fashion industry. And she's like, is it, is it? <laughs> yeah, and I think like what you said about this course being application of tech. Um, and we talk a lot about uh, the purpose of doing things just because you can make something does it mean it should exist um, you know that's always a question that we talk about so having your purpose of why you want to make something and why it's beneficial for the work that you're doing is so important because I think there's a lot of tech exists and you think why, why no one really needs this in in my field <laughs> 
Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, often can cause more harm than good, and and especially these days, there's just a often a massive like ecological cost as well. To like, do do you need to apply something which is going to kind of involve massive computational costs to to just to like churn out some numbers that necessarily isn't being that helpful? Mm, thanks for sharing, Nadia. We've got yeah, Nicole saying that they're doing media communications right now at UAL as well. We have as well graphic design at CSM. And we also have a, a very good question from, from Shayla, which I'm showing on the screen now, which is, can I come from a bit of a technical background? I did an undergraduate in actual science, but I'm interested in the creative industries. Um, and actually, yeah, they mentioned that they are interested in improving diversity in film. So I think that's a very interesting question here to cover. I am, um, yeah, cool. I, um, maybe I'll do this one first whilst it's here, and then maybe we can get Polo to talk about his background because there was someone from graphic design and that's part of his background as well. Um, the, the, uh, yeah, I mean, there's, the, there's definitely, um, if you are interested in the, in the creative industries, um, most of the context that we teach stuff um, is going to be in that and you'll get a lot of opportunities um, to kind of further explore that. Um, I'm not 100% sure what actuar actuarial science is, is, is to do is like kind of maths, I guess. Uh, I think I, I, uh, I think an actuary is someone to do with insurance. I'm really sorry if, that, if I'm showing my notes there. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're coming with like a reasonable uh, feel for like for like the scientific method for um, maybe the application of some stats and and uh, maybe like the scientific approach to research that's definitely going to put you in good stead um, and yeah the nice thing about the course is there'll be lots of people from lots of other backgrounds so what um, so whilst you may find some stuff more in, like more like fits to your current skill set and um, You'll be able to help out other people and they'll also be able to help you out as well and um, so i think kind of yeah throughout the whole course and um, yeah i think yeah we already have people who don't necessarily come from like super creative industry backgrounds like um like some people who worked in who did like art history so they're not necessarily like um in the kind of creation side um other people come from, we've got a couple of people that come from more like kind of business kind of background as well. Um, so I think that, yeah, that's, that'll be great. Beautiful. Shayla just um, clarified that actuarial is about insurance, stats and math. So cool. yeah, you were about right. Interesting. Yeah, it would be great to hear from you, Paul, as well. Um, yeah, so I, I did graphic design. I also do illustration and um, yeah, I think I chose this MSc because um, there's like a focus to also explore new ways of uh, using data science and finding, just kind of pushing the limits that are out there right now and kind of applying it to your domain because I was just interesting, interested in how you can use those kind of skills to um, as a design tool as well and really be part of the creative process. And I don't really see it out there much. So I kind of, it's good to maybe be the first one to do it. So it's nice um, that you can kind of like learn these things here and use these skills to kind of also influence your current practice and it kind of ties in well together. And also I noticed, like Nadia said, like you kind of, it's good to if you have like your own kind of direction when you start. But I also just also realized I got surprised all the time with stuff that I also noticed, oh, like these things I wasn't interested in before, but then I realized, oh, actually this relates to what I'm interested in as well. Like I wasn't really interested in doing like, maybe like generative design or something. Um, but then I realized actually this is quite interesting when you explore it further. So there's really like, um, you can get really practical of also like generating like designs and get really into it, like the visual side of things, which I, I think it's quite exciting. It's very innovative. So, yeah. Thanks, Paula, for that. We have another question as well, um, which says that they did an undergrad in business administration and if they can still apply for this MSc. What would you say, Louis, to that? Um, uh, yeah, so uh, again, um, yeah, one of the like big applications of data science in the 
in the kind of in industry kind of direct in the broader sense is often this focus on like improving I like even improving productivity or um yeah like uh, improving how uh, business decisions are made um like uh, I would I would say it's not necessarily um like the like the main focus of the course but lots of stuff that we do do is like widely applicable to this um I think definitely like most of the assignments we do are quite open uh, so you're everyone's kind of free to like kind of within certain bounds for a lot of stuff kind of put their own take on it and like push their own and um, kind of explore their own ideas and um, so yeah and I'm, I'm, perf I'm perfectly happy um, like supporting a, a wide range of, of, of things and um, yeah definitely the yeah definitely the skill sets to match up and um, I would have thought if yeah if your interest is in like looking these things with business and maybe like taking it uh, either like specifically business in the creative industries and um, uh, so that can include yeah, all of the like stuff that involves content generation um, or like analysis um, or like analysis we cover stuff maybe like social media analysis that kind of thing. Um, Beautiful. All right, so before we jump on to the next one, we have one last question from British. Hi, British. Um, so yeah, they hold a business degree and they're keen to study data science and AI. Can I apply? I do not possess any domain knowledge of CS. Can I start afresh? Uh, yeah, I think lots of people came with no, with no computer science knowledge. Um, and uh, yeah, so like the first, uh, basically the, the focus of the first term is trying to get people from a, like a diverse background up to quite like a level playing field. And so we teach one quite domain specific course to natural language processing, um, which is made with, which does involve like some programming, but most of the stuff is in quite like a kind of top down way. So we'll give you code for you to play around with. Um, whereas the other, other one will, will, will start you from a lot more like kind of foundational principles. Um, including like yeah some like core computer science concepts and math stuff as well so hopefully by the end of kind of by christmas and um, everyone will hopefully have started to like reach a like similar thing amazing okay so we'll go for the next one now um which is what's the difference between data science at cci and elsewhere what makes this msc at cci so unique uh, yeah, I guess maybe I maybe I stand to this because uh, I guess maybe the students only only have a view on a, on, on our particular one. Um, I think I, uh, I think specifically for me, for, like with the focus on the CCI, I think one thing that makes the CCI uh, different from a lot of places that are either doing like just normal data science or they or kind of more kind of more creative computational kind of stuff. Um, is a real like big front and center um, focus on the social mission of the CCI, and um, so I think in general the the kind of the AI community has started to like become more, um, or at least certain parts of it become more kind of critical of itself and self-reflective. The kind of the initial gold rush of people just going apply it to everything, don't think about it, and um, has become a bit more critical and. Um, so all of the all of the researchers, all of the workers, the way we teach, um, the way we strategically plan here at this like at the CCI, very much has a focus on how can we be how are we making things better, not just like how are we not doing evil horrible things. It's how can we be using our skills to make to make things better. Um, so I think that's a it doesn't necessarily like fall within the remit of the like the creative side of it, but just as a kind of general department that whole kind of strategic approach is really like front and center. And um, yeah, we kind of touched on this before, but we've got a, a, yeah, a real focus on application. And um, so whilst we will teach like kind of fundamental skills, they're kind of, it's not just like, this is it for the sake of it. It's like, you can learn this and then you can use it to answer these type of questions, or you can use this to kind of generate these kind of things. And um, so I think that's nice. And um, I think in general, this like outside of the CCI, but this specific course 
you might get other like units maybe um one of the master's programs that would maybe um focus towards this so maybe you'd get like a some uh, maybe like one unit as part of a, either like a kind of creative tech course or as a like a data science course that would go oh we're going to look about ai and art for for like one term and um, so i think really there's probably not a lot out there which takes um the kind of holistic approach over the whole year so kind of as this kind of this is the one thing we're looking at and we're spending a lot of time kind of building up your skills from like slightly different angles and kind of give, giving you like a real like solid covering of like the whole course is building you towards and um, kind of this specific focus of doing something interesting with data science and ai and um, in a creative world um, so i think that's probably the what makes it different from like other things you might find elsewhere thanks louis that's great Beautiful. And then we have Nicole as well asking, what programming language do you use? Which actually uh, we were about to cover as well with this question. What are the computer and data science skills will I will learn in the course? Sorry about the, the typo there. Um, I, just uh, can we can we see what Nadia, Nadia and Paolo have learned? <laughs> Python. Uh, My heart yeah. will always be with Python. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and we also learned some JavaScript, so. But I also Anything like else? that um, even <laughs> though we learn a lot of like application and sometimes, like you said, we get template code, but we do understand like how things work. Like I think in the last term, everything about neural networks and all the math behind that. And it's hard, but I think it's necessary because it gets you thinking like a programmer. So even though you do get template code, you you know what's happening, you know how to use it and what's like the most efficient or the best outcome to come out of it um so yeah i think that's really important that we learn all of that too uh, yeah what, what what data science skills have you learned Paolo? um what nadia said <laughs> 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 no but um also i guess um the kind of math skills that come of it also like statistics and um, experiment design, how you uh, make experiments. And I think also just broadly like research skills. I, I kind of like that there's also a researchy approach to it. I think it can also take you further if you want to maybe get more into research later. And um, yeah, I think just also specifically a critical approach that we really um, don't just like use like a one liner of like some model and then just like run and see what happens. We just really think about it from the beginning. Cool, nice. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I don't think I've got, um, if people want like specifics um, about the kind of things we can do and um, at the end of the, the video from the uh, first open day, which you can find on the CCIG2 page, um, there's a bit where I go through all of the units that we'll do. So if you want to see like a bit more like specific detail about kind of which of the six like main core units we'll do, um, you can see that. Um, but just I can briefly just go through it now. Well, we say we cover natural language processing. So this is analysis and generation of text. Um, as basic STEM skills. So yeah, as Paolo said, how to design experiments, um, how to use statistics and um, to answer questions. Um, basic data science skills, um, AI in the context of media. So this is looking at specifically analyzing and generating like, images and videos and audio. Um, and then this term, we're looking at some kind of the professional side of data science. So like application areas um, in the in kind of actual industry, hearing from a lot of people that have jobs and kind of the skills they got there. And then we're thinking about like, if you work in the industry, like how do, how do you properly scope out a project? How do you respond to a brief? How do you write a proposal for a commission? Um, that kind of stuff. And also looking at personalization, um, which is a huge part of um, all industries these days. Um, so that'll be how does Netflix recommend you things or Spotify or how does a, how does a specific website kind of um, personalize itself to your unique experience? Um, so yeah, 
and I guess then a bit of crossover with advertising in that as well. Um, so that's the kind of broad domain areas. Beautiful, thanks, Louis. Yeah, just to note that um, we'll be sharing the YouTube link to this other open day session again on the chat in a bit, just so you can save it for later, because that was a very informative talk as well about exactly what is covered in each unit. So yeah, I would strongly encourage you to watch that as well. Uh, now we're gonna jump on some more practical questions about the course, and this one, I think everyone can can have a say about that. What's the theory practice ratio? Who would like to maybe just share some of your experience? Being um, in the I course? think it's kind of half, half. Like we have the journal papers once a week where we um, read about like yeah academic journals and stuff. And I think it's really beneficial in giving context to what you're doing and what like giving you ideas for what you could possibly look into. Because I think when I joined this course, I had an idea of what it was, but I had no idea how huge like the world of AI and tech was, is just like beyond what I imagined. And so reading the journal papers kind of fills in those gaps of, um, yeah, get, letting you know things that you didn't know existed, and then you read them and you realize it does exist. Um, so, like the theory is really important. And then, so like with my my NLP project last term, I had no idea what I wanted to do. But from reading like fashion journal papers and then finding the gap in what was missing, then I knew what I wanted to do for practice. So it kind of works hand in hand. Yeah. Also, I when we have like the technical kind of lectures, I feel like everything we learn is also kind of grounded in theory. Like um, you kind of don't really have a class where it's like, oh, we just do this. It's kind of like also the context of it and what you can do and what project, like maybe like, what problems there are and what works, what didn't work, bad stuff that happened or how we can avoid it. So I think um, we're also just like very like technical kind of theory, I guess, um, um, where maybe there's a focus on trying to understand the broader theory rather than getting really hung up on really, really tiny details of code, um, which is good because then you kind of know what's important and maybe you don't get lost in um, a lot of small things. <laughs> I think Beautiful. it saves a lot of time not writing some of the code from scratch because then we can spend our time actually making things. Beautiful. Uh, uh, yeah, I think maybe this is maybe another time I'll briefly to talk about um, the, uh, kind of the assignments, the assessment. Um, I guess that's the kind of one of the core things of this is like, you know, we teach you things uh, from a certain like perspective uh, and then the way that we assess you obviously is to like we want to assess certain things that we hope we've taught you um so i think for me when i'm uh, when i'm setting assignments or when i'm like uh, when i'm marking stuff what i, what I really want to see from the students is like have they have they kind of really taken to the to, to the kind of the, the things that i've tried to, have they kind of got like a deep understand like a more deeper understanding of the of the thing that I've been trying to teach them uh, and why it might be useful um, to some specific thing that they've applied it to that they're interested in. Um, so because of that, like um, most of the assignments will have some kind of reflective part to it. Um, so rather than necessarily like, I think we have just, we only have one like traditional exam um, in your kind of, in like the, in the traditional sense of like, sit down, answer some questions, there are right and wrong answers. Um, yeah, as much as possible, we've got quite a lot of kind of longer, kind of researchy kind of projects. Um, got a few essays this term. Um, yeah, so I think in in general, whilst we whilst we will, we we do teach people um, kind of the a lot like a good amount of technical skills. Um, I think we do. There is also a, an app, a focus on getting them to like. Build, yeah, use them to build something and then, and then kind of reflect on kind of how they've managed to build that and like what's interesting about it. Great, thank you for that. And that leads us to the question of the actual work that students will get to produce during the, 
the course. So yeah, here it would be great to hear from you, Louis, about the brief that students receive across the year, but also it will be amazing to hear from uh, Nadia and Paulo about what sort of projects you are working on. Who wants to start? <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, I know that the students go because I, I think I, I kind of feel like I kind of just covered a little bit of that. Um, um, yeah, I can talk about. Should I talk about like the some of like the assignments I've done? Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah, from from last term, I think the my favorite one was the NLP project, um, and I. Yeah, I was pretty happy with that one. Um, it's actually on the UAL CCI Instagram page, the project that I did, which was um, building an outfit generator. So that was coded on Python. Um, and and I actually still use it. Uh, I basically uh, <laughs> wrote every single every single item in my wardrobe into an Excel sheet and then coded something on Python that it generates outfits for me to wear every day. Um, and it's it's kind of useful. I mean, it's a really small project, but um, again, like there's a lot of fashion tech out there that exists and it doesn't, either it doesn't work or it's not really useful. Um, but because now that I know how to code my own things, I can just make stuff that actually work and I think actually has some purpose. Um, and then, uh, for the last term, yeah, so building on that, what I said that coming with a direction, but then being open to things. So there are assignments that I've done that have nothing to do with fashion because I realized that there's so much more out there. And in um, for the artificial intelligence for media exam, um, when we had to do on JavaScript and it's um, training like animation based on movements or uh, based on images, so um, I did that instead on sign language because as much as I want to do things on fashion, I can't just force it into things if it doesn't fit. Um, so I created a program that responds to basic sign language and kind of in a visual way translates what the sign is that you show onto the webcam. Um, and I was pretty happy with that one too. But yeah, so it's like endless possibilities of what you want to do, um, yeah. <laughs> Shall I talk about yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <please. laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, I feel like I also did quite different things. Um, I really enjoyed last term. There was one task where you basically group things together. <laughs> it's like, a, should I just show it? Oh my God, okay. I'm just oh, the data it. science one. Yeah, I did that yes. on ASOS, I think. Oh my. <laughs> uh, wait, how do you share your screen? Wait, let me just try. Can I like just do that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wait. Okay. Wait. Yeah, so this, this was an assignment mm -hmm. where we were learning about something called clustering, where basically, uh, yeah, rather than necessary, uh, you kind of train models that will ho hopefully put stuff which is similar together near to each other. And um, so we were using a kind of, uh, if you don't have any like kind of labels or context beforehand, oh, yeah. um, you can just uh, train a model to like put, uh, in this case, images that it thinks are similar near to each other. Yeah, so I, this is basically the notebook where we did the code. And um, yeah, I just use it on a data set that I had sitting on my computer for a while of like pictures of like toys, <laughs> like Russian plush toys. And I was really interested since my literally my BA to how to like um, find a way to group them together and to display them. So this algorithm actually make, made it work. So yeah, you can see that it actually started grouping them into the same kinds of animals. And you can also see where it goes wrong. So um, yeah, so I, it really ties into what I've been doing in like my design work as well, but manually with like book design. So it's kind of interesting to get started. It's like obviously a starting point, but learning this tool was really interesting to see how I could take it by another project. So yeah, that was fun. That's great. <laughs>
Thanks for sharing that, Polo. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, so the next question that we have is, will we have a graduation show? So the short answer is definitely yes, like that's part of the experience at any course. And because of the global situation at the moment, everything has been moved online, but we've done actually ready one graduation for the MSc in Creative Computing last year, and it went amazingly well. We were, of course, part of this uh, UAL Graduate Showcase project, which is like an online platform that gathers all the projects and talent within UAL. And actually, we will talk about it a bit later on because that's like slightly related to a project that is coming up now for MSc students. Um, so yes, the, the answer is yes, we will always make our best to celebrate, you know, all the, all the work and all the amazing talent that we have at CCI and we'll always find spaces for that to, to happen. So yeah, hopefully once this cohort is, um, is done, maybe later in this year, we'll definitely have our own graduation show. Um, or is it at the beginning of next year? I'm not sure when you will be graduating. Uh uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure when the graduation will be. The final projects get handed in at the end of September. Um, yes, amazing. So that will likely yeah, ha be happening before end of the year. So we'll definitely be in touch with more details and see what all the projects, um, how all the projects yeah, unravels. Beautiful. Then the second question that we have. Yeah, so we have what's the size of the course and classes? It would be great to hear how many of you are there in the cohort at the moment. Uh, yeah, so there is 12 uh, on the current cohort, um, which is yeah, but, uh, really a really lovely size. Um, but I think uh, as it was the first year of the program, um, and of course because of COVID, um, we probably made it slightly smaller than we normally did. So kind of in key with like moving on from that um, and also just the general expansion of the CCI. Um, I think pro, uh, it's hard to know exactly how many people we will have next year. Um, but I would imagine it would be probably more like 25 to 30, um, uh, depending, yeah, depending on, I think, yeah, possibly bigger than that, um, which is nice. It's kind of, yeah, a good enough size to, um, we can, you know, we can teach everyone in one group, um, kind of, and so I think that would be nice. Um, there also might be a few more students on other courses, because CCI is also offering a modular program uh, where you can kind of pick and choose units from, uh, like some of the other master's programs. So uh, some of the, which I'm really looking forward to, so you'll also get, as well as people that are on the uh, data science course, you'll also have people, uh, maybe you're just on like one or two units that come from uh, many, like some of the other masters that the, um, that the CCI offers. Um, so that's gonna be kind of fluid and nice as well, and kind of nice for like cross-pollination of ideas and stuff. Yeah, it's great that you mentioned that, Louis. I'm gonna share the link to, that uh, modular provision on the chat because that's something that we just literally launched like maybe a few weeks ago. So it's pretty new, but it's gonna be an exciting one. So yeah, I'll definitely share that in a bit. Okay, so moving on, we have the more practical questions about um, the application process. So a lot of people will have questions about whether they need a portfolio to apply, what are the technical requirements to apply? What level of maths that comes up a lot? So maybe we could just talk a little bit about what are the actual requirements for anyone interested in the MSc to apply? Uh, yeah, so the best place to look for this is on the actual course page um, on the UAL website. And currently, I'm, minim I'm like personally, I'm minimally involved in the application process. Um, but what I can say is, um, yeah, I think just in general, a what you want to do on your kind of covering letter that you send in, you don't necessarily need to send in a portfolio. Um, but on your kind of, uh, I don't know quite what they call it, um, but like your personal statement, um, I think the importance, rather than necessarily your skills, is uh, you want to show that you're enthusiastic. Um, and I think, like, definitely, it, it, it has a like it, it helps to be. Um, yeah, like at any technical or like maths or whatever knowledge you have coming into this is is helpful. But um, I think in general, if you can show that you like when you turn up, you have to be willing to learn, and um, and we'll have all that provision like provision for you. Like I, we will teach the course with no like um, assumption that you like know 
like most things, uh, and we do it. Yeah, we try and go reasonably slowly because of this. Um, I would say, if you are concerned about your like uh, technical background, feel free to email me, um, and you'll be able to. I think my email address will be available probably on the course website, and um, I'm happy to answer any of your questions. Um, and also in your app, like, yeah, if you're worried about it from like an application side of you, um, if you can show. Uh, maybe do a bit of research and show like if you can show which uh, kind of areas or skills you're interested in learning it shows that you're even if you don't necessarily already have the skills you kind of considered a bit like what where you might want to apply them and why you might, why you want to, why you might want to pick them up amazing thank you louis yeah if you go through the msc website you'll see um a link where it says like contact us if you have any queries um, but also I'm gonna drop the CCI email on the chat so you can contact us directly. Um, so feel free to yeah drop us any line with whatever concern or question you have. So we'll definitely be able to assist on that front as well. Amazing. So uh, there was also an attendee asking about employability. So we'll, we'll jump onto that side now. Um, we have this question that says, will there be any opportunities for work placements or research at the MSC? Uh, yeah, so I mean, yeah, very much. I kind of always try and consider stuff um, for like a vocational, from a vocational point of view. Um, so, from like you know, we teach Python. Python is the is going to be the language that you'll that most places will, um, most jobs will look for um, in in a data science role. Um, in terms of like specific uh, chances for work placements or research. Um, we have a lot of people coming in on one of the units this course, uh, this term to talk that come from industry. I think we've got almost someone every week. Um, so these are good contacts um, for, uh, for people to make. I'm more than happy for in the, there's no formal kind of work placement or uh, within the like because it's only a year long course um, but definitely um, for example if people meet people um, either that come in to do talks or that um, or they've maybe found elsewhere um, and when they do their like final research project their master's thesis um, and if they if they want to do that like somehow situated within um, someone more commercially um, that's definitely something we would we would really encourage and like enjoy to do that um, in terms of like actual opportunities for work <laughs> whilst you're doing the course we've got um, the the cci actually has some has recently taken over the kind of the running of the final showcase website and with that has come with some opportunities um for students to actually get work working on working on the like ual uh final showcase website and um, so this would be uh, they're looking at recommender systems so Kind of when people are looking at certain like student projects or events um, they can get recommended other things they might like which is this is like something we did like last week um, in the course and um, so we're going to offer that job to, to a student to take on and um, they also want someone to do automatic image tagging and kind of sorting um, and again that's stuff that we would have covered last year and um, uh, sorry last term and um, so even just like within um, UAL and stuff uh, and just like variously on research projects and stuff, we quite often have like freelance gigs that we give to students. Um, former alumni um, have taught on the course this year, so people who graduated not from our course because it's the first year, um, but from the creative computing course, um, have got jobs as technicians or and also as associate lecturers teaching uh, people on courses. And um, so I think there's lots of opportunities where we, you know, where we where could we get a lot of great really talented students and we want to keep them close um, so in that respect um, we try and offer the opportunities as much as we can um, maybe into and then i guess in terms of like wider employability um, there's definitely like uh yeah definitely a very employable range and um, i'm not going to go into it in detail but uh if you feel feel like googling what the average salary of a data scientist is and um, feel free to do that and um, it's not bad uh, 
not that you know not that that's necessarily everyone's always focus and um, again you know uh we don't i don't talk from a position of privilege where we say we don't talk about like interests of like wages and stuff um in terms of the actual like creative industry um lots of stuff in content generation and um, data analysis especially of like social media and um, Advertising has a massive interest in this stuff. Um, there's a lot of work um, in startups, um, especially like, and especially in London. London's big, big hub for like uh, AI startups, kind of an AI boom. And um, so we've got a lot of jobs around here. Um, further research in academia, um, if you want to move on um, to do like maybe more research or PhDs, that kind of thing. Um, what else have we got? We're actually doing a project at the moment with gov.uk with some of the students. So that's the government website. So they're looking to add personalization into their website. And so we're getting the students to come up with some ideas for them. I guess that kind of shows that you know, most companies um, are hiring data scientists to optimize various parts of their like kind of product experience. Um, And yeah, uh, and then just kind of broadly the programming skills um, are going to be, even if you don't necessarily want to stick within data science, um, like the a solid branding and like Python programming will allow you to maybe just get other kind of like software development jobs. Amazing. Thanks, Louis. Now it would be great to hear from you, Polo and Nadia, about how you, how have you seen your own practice being expanded like across across this year because it feels like maybe the idea that you had about your career has changed dramatically now that you're into this course and you see like all these new doors opening up um so yeah it would be great to see how how you've experienced that and what yeah how how that you know that idea of yourself working in the in the context looks like now <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, before it's changed completely. Before this, um, I was going to be a fashion buyer. Like, that's what I was doing, that's what I was trained for, and I thought that was it. Um, and now, like, so many things have opened up. Um, and especially, like, fashion tech, it's so new. Like, yeah, so working in fashion industry, I realized a lot of things were very manual, um, and nothing is automated or it's just not efficient at all so it's such a big space to get into and it's a thing that not a lot of people are in so i remember in lcf they used to have talks of um uh, people from tech come in and kind of trying to encourage fashion students to get into tech and no one was really that interested um so yeah if you're from fashion definitely it's a space for <laughs> to come into um that's like new and emerging and you can like make changes um, in it, but even um, like I said, if if you join the course and suddenly realize there's something else you're interested in, like be open to that. Um, and it it is also quite research based. Um, that sometimes I think, oh, maybe I'm going to do a PhD. Like <laughs> there's so much. Um, there's just yeah, there's there's a lot to learn. Just be open about it. Yeah, I feel like uh, we just learned so many things it's kind of unbelievable <laughs> so it's just like how it's to like compare what life was before that it? yeah it's like it's like so yeah um i feel like i'm personally also kind of thinking of i'm not really done exploring so i feel like i'm also maybe thinking of doing a phd because <laughs> there's just like so much to find out <laughs> so yeah um but i feel like we still have our like final project to do and i feel like that will also push things into a further direction as well because we kind of like did such a broad thing so yeah i, I feel things are still really open right now <laughs> that's good thank you so much for sharing that okay we are almost done with the questions we're just five minutes to three so we're gonna go through the last two so we have one about what teaching and technical resources are available to CCI students. So I don't know if all of you will have watched the, the video from the other open day session, but there we show you around this, the actual physical space of CCI. You can see a little bit about all the, like the physical spaces we have, all the physical computing. Um, we have, um, I'm gonna just 
run you through a few of the uh, technical resources that are available there. So we have three classrooms there, two seminar rooms, and one high-end computer suite, fit with like the latest technology, including 24 high-spec computers with NVIDIA, um, 4K monitors for working on projects ranging from machine learning to 3D rendering, video editing, whatever you need to work on. Um, additionally, many of these computers can actually be accessed remotely from home after hours to enable you know, access to specialist software or the high performance for rendering uh, or machine learning work. And then in addition to these, uh, to these uh, computing facilities, we also have dedicated space, uh, space for electronic soldering, 3D printing and virtual reality facilities. And also because we're part of Camberwell College of Arts, we have, um, well, CCI students have access to the 3D workshop, which includes additional 3D printing facilities, laser cutting. We've just acquired our own actually at CCI, which is great. CNC machining and a full wood workshop as well. So that just to give you a bit of an overview of all the resources that are, uh, will be available to you if you join CCI. But of course, it's also worth mentioning the amazing uh, technical support that we have. We have a team of technicians who assist students in their projects. We have our um, Slack workspace where basically we're like constantly sharing uh, resources, sharing events, sharing any doubts, and everyone gets to see all these um, all these questions that students have, and everyone can learn from from that process, which I think is super um, nurturing for everyone at CCI because you get to learn a lot of things just by being there in this virtual space, which is definitely great mentioning as well. And I don't know if you would like to share any other thoughts on resources and, and, and yeah, spaces available to CCI, Louis, that you feel could be relevant uh, for MSC students? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess, um, um, Clearly, it's a it's a good thing uh, from what both both Paolo and Nadia said about, about thinking about doing PhDs. So we have quite like a, one interesting resource um, is the basically just the research community at CCI. So like as well as um, doing a lot of like teaching programs, having a lot of good like lectures um, and technicians and stuff. Like CCI also has a pretty like a really strong research community. Like we have some really like tech, like world leading researchers and. Um, in the area and um, working that kind of really interesting research and um, a growing number of PhD students um, and like just general postgrad community and we also have the MRS program as well which is like a even more like research focused thing so because of that um, and we, we have quite like a tight um, so a lot of us who teach also have a strong research kind of like current research practice but we also have a lot of like seminars and are open to everyone about research skills and like various aspects of that. Um, and so, like, yeah, a lot of the a lot of the data science students have kind of come to those um, sessions where they've either learned about research skills, heard about current research of other PhD students that are happening at the moment. And um, so, I think as well that's a really just in it in of itself that's a super valuable uh, resource. I like I think if you if you were so inclined, you could really. Um, learn a lot of the stuff you'd maybe pick up in like the first six months of a PhD <laughs> just by kind of like hanging around. Amazing. Thank you, Louis. And yeah, we'll just jump on to the last one, which is what is the CCI community like? Um, maybe we could like all share something we feel that is relevant sharing with others who are not part of, of CCI yet. Um, I'm happy to start like for me, I've been working at CCI for like almost two years and a half or three years, and I've just found it a very um, vibrant space where everyone knows how to have fun while learning. And I think that's something very valuable in education that's like much needed. So I'm definitely gonna go with that. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's it's, it's super inspiring because yeah, again, everyone everyone who's part of the CCI also has such like varied practices um, outside of it. So you're always seeing other people that work there or other students or ex-students um, posting about things that they've made or like research they've done or jobs they've done. Um, yeah, and that's always really interesting. It's very, really good to yeah work, work with the community of the people who you, you're kind of going, that's so cool. I'm, I'm regularly impressed and uh, inspired by everyone there. 
Yeah, I think coming from um, like LCF, which is such a big, um, it's such a big course, there's so many students and it's the environment inherently is so competitive. You're fighting for things, you're, you're like struggling and it's, yeah, it, it's, you know, quite hostile <laughs> um, environment. But CCI is so different. It's like tight knit, everyone's so nice. You're helping each other, you want to collaborate. You're like, it, it's, yeah, I, it feels more homey than, um, yeah, LCF. Yeah, I feel like it also is completely like a completely different experience for me now. It's like, I think you can tell that it's also fairly new and small and people are like excited. Like, I think also because it's like so research based, people are just like really looking to do new things and um, everyone's very approachable. I think also the Slack channel makes it very, it makes it easier. It's very like, you can always kind of get hold of someone like um, your tutors, everyone or people who are not in your course and uh, share things. And I think it makes it very open and yeah, it's nice. <laughs> Lovely. Thanks so much for joining us, Louis, Nadia, Polo, today. It was super informative and insightful and beautiful to hear from, from all of you. So, yeah, just a big thanks to you and to everyone that joined us. Um, yes, I'm just going to quickly mention a few things before we leave. Um, of course, if you have any questions, feel free to email us on the email that I just put on the chat. Uh, if you have any queries that were not covered during this hour, uh, we apologize. We we did our, our best to cover everything, but of course, there's always more stuff that will apply to like individuals. So please reach out to us if you have any questions. Uh, also, uh, the website where you can find all the details about the application process specifically. Uh, please feel free to have a look at it. I'm going to send all the relevant emails. Um, all the relevant links sorry to your email after this event and yes i would like yeah i would like to invite you to just yeah follow us on social media for any event opportunities that are coming up and also before i say goodbye just um another note that we've just launched a learning program which is called technology and power rights resistance and reimaginings and is a learning program that is open to everyone who's interested in activism and tech. And we're running a public seminar next week on the 6th and 7th, only for a few hours each day. And then we are doing an open call for anyone who wants to be part of a four day workshop to explore these topics further. This program was designed by Dr. Pixcraft, who's the course leader of the MA in Internet Equalities, which we just launched at CCI this year as well. So yeah, just wanted to quickly share that. I will also share you all the links so you can have a look at the program and hopefully apply. And yeah, in the meantime, hopefully we'll stay in touch on the internet and yeah, we we'll look forward to receiving your application and having you as part of CCI hopefully next year. And that's all from me. Thanks everyone. And yeah, wish you a lovely afternoon ahead. Cool. Thank you. Bye Georgina. everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>